Hello, everyone, and welcome to Super Switch Heads, the premier Nintendo podcast in all of the internet. My name is Matthew Stoner. My name is Patrick Nisley. My name is David Howe, and oh boy, oh boy, ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special guest joining us on today's episode. Stephanie Klimov from another Zelda podcast and Boss Rush has joined the show. How's it going, Stephanie? Going well. I just got lost, wandered in here, and found some <laughs> Zelda fans, so I feel right at home. Yeah. Uh, a shrine ha- has arisen, um, and you have entered it uh, in the form of this podcast. Uh, yes. Thank you for being here. This is an entire episode all about a speculation on Tears of the Kingdom. Um, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is coming out soon. Um, maybe there's a, a trailer coming out soon. So we wanted to have an episode. To, uh, Stephanie, you're here to talk about all the things that we might know and uh, things that we're going to make up. Um, I'm, very, I'm very excited about this one. No, it's it's as a Zelda fan, part of being a part of the fan group is to analyze every piece of yeah, data that you naturally. have and extrapolating it to random pieces of predictions. Yeah, so. We would make excellent murder investigators. <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah. We're in CSI now, as long with we're also lawyers. Um, also, uh, but that's what we're doing for the main segment. Uh, but we got a bunch of news. Um, there is speculation on uh, an email that Nintendo sent out about maybe a new Mario Odyssey. Last of Us uh, got its first release. Uh, the TV show on HBO came out. Uh, Xbox has a new event, Developer Direct, that's coming out soon. And a bunch more. How's everyone doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. There's a lot lot going on. I did see The Last of Us show and really Me too. It. I'm still yeah. riding off that high. Whew. Me too. Yeah. And I'm kind of like, I haven't really played that much of the games. Like I've played the first like three or four hours of the first game and that's pretty much it. So I'm kind of like excited to just take in the story in this format and then go back and revisit the game uh, after I've watched it. So I think it's a... Uh, I don't know. It's just a cool time. Good time to uh, be a fan of movies and video games. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I, uh, David, you and I had lunch earlier today, uh, and I lied to mm-hmm. you. I did not watch it this afternoon. Instead, I went oh, to really? go get um, a safety inspection for my car and a haircut. Uh, same basic idea. Yeah. Adulting, <laughs> you know, get it. I wanted to consume media as much as I, as much as I wanted. Uh, I'm good. Uh, I had a sketch show. Um, uh, sketch comedy show that I put on. I was very, very happy about it. I wrote a sketch uh, where um, what if uh, MRI or CT machines had advertising? Um, oh, that's awful. Uh, and so that was really fun. I was really Doesn't proud feel of that too sketch. far off. Yeah. So, you know, it's yeah. a CT machine that uh, sings you uh, the McDonald's jingle, o- O'Reilly's <laughs> jingle, or the baby back ribs jingle. Um, so that was really fun to put on a stage and have people laugh at it. Um, so I'm, Hell I'm yeah. speaking of writing highs. That's the high I'm writing off of. Very nice. good. Mm. Uh, nice. What about you, Patrick? Uh, yeah, I had a great weekend. I had my wedding anniversary. We went out of town the past few years. We have not been able to. Oh, happy to, anniversary. Thank you. Uh, actually being sick with COVID or the COVID, uh, you know, phenomenon. Um, mm. but we went somewhere not too far and just had a nice relaxing weekend. Um, so that was good. Just Hell yeah. Without the kid. Much so. needed. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty relaxed. I'm chill. Dissociate. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That's yeah. exactly what it was. <laughs> uh, how about you, Stephanie? How's your week going? Um, it was an absolute whirlwind. I'm trying to even remember what happened because that's <laughs> how ma- ma- crazy it was. I mean, my, my kid had a lot of things he had to do. I take my cat to the vet and all this shenanigans so but throughout that you know i was able to get some gaming in i am actually playing or replaying because i've already beat the last of us part one and two but i got the the latest remake Uh, um, okay and the latest remake and i'm actually playing alongside the tv show we'll see how well that works because you know i can't expect it to go line by line but i'm just doing my best like i played up until they you know, Joel and Ellie leave Boston and you meet Bill. Right. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I watched it last night. Um, so yeah, and then back to work tomorrow. So um, I'm also getting ready um, to to plan for PAX East. I know it's still a couple months away, but right. uh, um, hopefully I can be there to represent the Boss Rush writing team. If not, I'll be there just to go as a fan and <laughs> buy a bunch of merchandise I probably don't need. Yeah, but, yeah. 
I need to make it out to one of those. Yeah. Well, um, last week on the show, we had Marcus from Seactro Games come on and talk about his games. And um, we got some great shout outs to give to, to comments we received about that episode. Um, over on our Discord, Swampy Southpond, DCD, both shared their love for Super Kiwi 64. Mm-hmm. Um, we got to know this great episode from AV. I can't see. Glad to see I can't see has joined the Discord. Um, Welcome. So they mm-hmm. love shorter games. Other Dylan liked how Marcus was open. Lee commented they were inspired to dip their toe into game dev and also said they're playing the same game I've been playing, Wayward Strand. Over on YouTube, GWA said Banana 64 leak regarding <laughs> Marcus's joke about bananas. Anybody who's guested on this show knows what that was about. Yeah, and, and I, if you don't, I, you're just going to have to be a guest. <laughs> you're just going to have to be a guest. Uh, so I don't think it was a leak. Uh, GWA. Although but maybe. Maybe his next game is maybe Banana 64. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then over on Twitter, uh, Hinolti stuff uh, said, very interesting, definitely going to listen Thanks for, hopefully you checked it out and are listening to this. Uh, So yeah, uh, we do love hearing from our listeners and viewers. So definitely send us a note. If there's anything we say, uh, you know, that you have a response to, we appreciate it. If you share the podcast online and please like, and subscribe on the YouTube. That does it for that. Let's talk about all the things, all the things. So first off, um, you know, there hasn't been an update to Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet, which, you know, no, somewhat notoriously had some jank um, when they came out, uh, but there is going to be, they announced that there is going to be a update coming out late February. So mm. we still got a month and a half or so to wait on these bug fixes um, and quote unquote added functionality, which I don't know if that just is a nice way to say more bug fixes. Um, uh, I think it's the Pokemon home integration. Mm is I think yes. a lot of what this is, which is what we talked about this a while ago, that like there was one planned for, a, it would have been around February when they added home integration. So I think like it'll probably be a lot of that. And I just only hope, especially since they're taking a really long time that they've uh-huh. actually done their due diligence on this and uh, are actually looking into a lot of these uh, these issues people are having. Um, Cause it's been hard I, for me to pick it back up, to be honest. I was going to say, has anyone beat the main line of, of Scarlet or Violet? No, so I, I know I a lot of people who have. We're not like huge Pokemon players, so it's like right. <laughs> I've been waiting a bit for like a smoother. I'm like hoping that they'll That's, fix it. Yeah, and roll I, I, I only yeah. say that because um, my very brief history with Pokemon was I was the red and blue generation. I think silver and gold, maybe, and that's when I'm like, okay, not that I was too cool for it, but like I just had to move on other things, too and not cool. only that, but the Pokemon yeah. got kind of weird after that. I'm sorry, just like <laughs> there's a thousand po- of them. Yeah. Pokemon that is a vanilla ice cream cone, a key, like a, a chain of keys. Come on. Anyway. <laughs> Approved. <but> Stamp. <laughs> Matt, those are Matt's favorite. <laughs> yeah. No, you, don't love, <laughs> you don't love chain Coney Mon? Come yeah. on. Everybody loves chain that's like Coney a chandelier. Mon. Shanda, yeah. Shanda oh, Labra. Chandelure or something? Chandelure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Wiglet. I mean, Wiglet's what sold it for me this time. That's true. <laughs> but uh, all I want to say is I ended up uh, beating the main line of the story despite all the bugs and stuff. And I I will be honest with you, I am surprised in a good way how deep, I'm using air quotes, deep the story actually is because Pokemon's not really known for having very riveting, moving, deep story. Like I almost shed a tear and that is saying <laughs> a lot for Pokemon. So I'm just yeah. saying, you know, if these updates are going to fix max, massive bu- bugs, you know, I really hope more people can actually eat experience that because it's a pretty decent end to the game so Mm -hmm. totally well um moving on we'll 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 talk more about that when that happens in february but uh, Mm -hmm. moving on uh this is the final week of google stadia in fact unless you're listening to this like podcast right when it releases you're not google stadia will have shut down um approximately 12 hours after this episode (laughs) releases uh google stadia will be no more you um, better be listening to this episode within the first 12 <laughs> you're hours. You're not listening on time. You're missing your chance to squeeze <laughs> in some Google Stadia time. Um, no, but I guess of note is a couple things. One that, you know, there are a handful of games that, you know, you can transfer your save over to other platforms. So be aware of that. But then, David, I know you have been talking about the controller, right? Yeah. And, and there's some news around that. 
Yeah, they had uh, alluded to this before, but now it's official. Basically, sometime this week, uh, Google's putting out some sort of tool uh, to allow you to patch. Um, it's like a software update for the Stadia controller that's going to unlock the Bluetooth capabilities on it before it's always been a controller that speaks directly through Wi-Fi to the Stadia servers. And I think the idea was to minimize lag to the TV by like not having multiple levels of lag, right? So it's kind of like, you know, all, all going to the same place. But now that Stadia is shutting down, a lot of people are worried that these controllers are just going to become e-waste. And um, now, uh, which it's... These controllers are great. It's like the best thing about Stadia is these controllers. They just designed a really good ergonomic, sleek controller that I've always wanted to use, but just never really had Stadia. I got it for free once. It came with a <laughs> fucking Chromecast. Uh, I got it for like $1 back in the day. And so it's like, you know, so I'm excited to finally be able to use this. Uh, if not like on Switch, it might not work like that, but definitely on like the Steam Deck, I'm sure it'll work. Um, and so stuff like that will be really nice to uh so don't don't throw away your Stadia controllers just yet, folks. I know I'm talking to like one person right now, but still. Yeah. <laughs> as long um, as you reach one person, you made a difference. Uh -huh. That's yeah. right. We solved e-waste and pollution. <laughs> um, I, if only it were so easy. Uh, so uh, moving on then. Uh, we're going to talk about this uh, after it releases. I don't know. If there's a whole lot to to go into right now, but Fire Emblem Engage is coming out this week, uh, a mere 36 hours after this podcast <laughs> releases. Everything is now going to be quantified by that. Um, good bit. Good bit. So, <laughs> um, well, there's been you know we've talked about this last week. There's been previews and that sort of stuff that outlets have been doing, but also now you got to be aware because there's a lot of leaks online as well mm -hmm. of the game. So if Did you don't want to be leak? spoiled, is that yep. uh, yeah, okay. it's out there in the wild now. All right, yep. Stay engaged or don't disengage. <laughs> oh. Disengage, nice. Um, Very good. So yeah, I think we'll be talking about that more next week. But um, yeah, that's exciting yeah. if you're a Fire Emblem fan. Looking good. The countdown begins. And then uh, the sort of next big Nintendo game coming after that is Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe, the Wii game. Uh, I don't know, uh, remaster, whatever the, you know, we want to call this. Um, <laughs> and it sounds like there's more info that just came out on the web about it. Like they they created the website for it. Um, I, it just makes me think that we're going to hear a lot more about this after Fire Emblem comes out, and hopefully we'll hear a lot more about the main topic today as well after fire emblem comes out i'm hoping we'll get a direct in the next what's the release weeks. date for uh return to dreamland yeah it's uh what is it february 24th okay yeah i think we'll get a direct before that maybe I like uh so. and then kirby's dreamland is about to come out can be a segment you know, yeah I mean, it'll be a short like segment that. probably yeah. yeah that'd be great i'd love to see one in february yeah I'm, we'll show, I'm showing this in the video screen, but the, the website for uh, this new Kirby game, uh, it's great. Uh, it's so mm. colorful and like uh, cleverly designed to show like all of the the new power ups, uh, the, the power ups uh, and uh, kind of it's a great presentation of the game. Mm. Nice. Yeah, Nintendo makes really good websites for their games, uh, which is funny because I feel like people like never go to websites anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're either kind of sold on the game or you're not, right? Yeah. Like, I don't know if a website's ever converted me to to a game. Do kids do kids go on websites? <laughs> I'm like trying question. to figure out who goes on websites. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that is all of our content now consumed through like social media? Like, yeah, yeah that's what I think. apps. Okay. I just like I'm just thinking like kids typing in URLs and stuff like that. I don't know. Is I, that I, felt, that I felt with that question, I felt like uh, myself aged by like 40 years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like instantly. Yeah. Yeah, you want to feel old? Uh, the MP3 is an obsolete uh, <laughs> format. Oh my gosh. Stop talking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, talking about Nintendo Direct, uh, there's going to be an Xbox Direct. They're using the word, y'all, um, mm. which I think is interesting. Uh, they're calling it a Developer Direct. Um yes. <laughs> developer I, underscore direct because that's they're true happens, i guess because they don't want the file name to get screwed up um <laughs> it's so developer on, underscore direct underscore one underscore 25 <laughs> <laughs> yeah january 25th it's happening 
Um, I guess everybody should be aware that Starfield is not going to be shown off. That's probably something people would want to see. But <sighs> instead, they have, at least as far as I know, it'll be about Redfall, Forza, Minecraft Legends, and Elder Scrolls Online. Maybe some other stuff. What what were they calling their presentations before this, Matthew? What was that called? Like a Xbox? Uh, inside, inside, inside Xbox. Inside, inside Xbox, yeah. yeah. I think the naming of this is fascinating to me. It's called Developer Direct. It's not Xbox developer direct it's very like these studios it's like your uh your, your zenimax or your bethesda focused they're like the xbox branding while it's on like the logo it's not in the name of the thing yeah we'll see if there's another inside xbox ever or if this is the future for them mm. i think a lot of people are like let down by inside xbox and so they're trying to like move away from that branding and try something new um this is 40 minutes long and if it really is only four games that's like you know i guess a lot of like developer interviews i wonder if there'll be like anything kind of extra thrown in there because there's a I lot of stuff that they need to stuff. talk about <laughs> they need uh -huh. some games yeah <laughs> there, there better be surprises right so that, that's what people want yeah I hope so if, Banjo if, at least they're copying the name we'll see if they <laughs> yes. copy the concept of what nintendo does which is yeah surprising people with one or two yeah. things at least right um, we talked about this a little bit at the, up at the top, but it's, it's time to maybe talk about it in more detail. The last of us show has come out. The, uh, first episode at least has uh, come out on HBO. I have not watched it. I know Matthew hasn't watched it because we just talked about that, but David mm. and Stephanie, what, what do we think so far? Yeah. I mean, it's excellent so far. Um, uh, yeah, I, again, like I said, I've only played a little bit of the first game, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited to like, see what happens with the story. Cause I'm, I'm pretty much unspoilt, uh, even to this day. Um, and so that's exciting. And, um, yeah, it's getting like really, really good reviews, um, on uh, rotten tomatoes. It's got really good scores. Uh, everybody's saying this is breaking the video game curse, but it's like, I feel like we've kind of been. The video game curse has been broken for kind of the past like few years or so. We've been getting a lot of really good stuff, especially in animation. Um, but it's nice to see like the big tentpole show on HBO being a video game adaptation. Uh, it's pretty pretty awesome, and I think I think a lot of people will be enjoying this, whether or not they played the games, uh, which is really cool to see. Hopefully, gives games a bit more credence. Yeah. Agree. Yeah, I I do feel like the last few years we've kind of gotten better quality video game to movie or TV show adaptations. Um, so I wouldn't say this is like the first, but I was, I, I loved it. And I, I don't know. I, I, I try to temper my expectations, um, but I just think they executed it uh, flawlessly. The casting was great. Um, yeah. I know there's always a debate for adaptations. Do you stay true to the book and or video game or do you just, take it and run. And I think the fact that Neil Drux Druckmann's involve, uh, involvement with the show mm. made a difference in quality. As someone who played the game, I loved it. There were lines taken directly from the game. It actually stayed pretty true to at least the first 90 minutes of the show, but mm -hmm. they added additional background story, you know, filled in a bit more to, to round out the characters. So I just think they struck that perfect medium between taking content directly from the video game and adding their own. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Cause this is really like the first time, I mean, I guess you could kind of say like detective Pikachu is like an adaptation of the three DS game. Right. But it was like, mm -hmm. even that they took a lot of liberties and added a bunch of stuff. And, um, but I think most of the story beats were hit, but it's like so often when we see video game stuff, it's like something set within that world or like Witcher is an adaptation of the books, not necessarily the game. You know what I mean? And like, uh, or, you know, uh, like edge runners was something set within that world. So it's just interesting to see them like straight adapting the story. You know, yeah. I think like the last of us lends itself to that. It's already pretty cinematic as it is. It's already got tons of like, you know, like there's are, there's are shots that are taken from like the first like you know and like some of the shots they do are just like straight from the cinematics so it's, it's yeah, cool and, to uh, see as someone who is from Boston like it just blows my mind kind of <laughs> seeing a, a show taking place so to speak at least Yo, in the beginning there we're we're in Austin so it was like the oh, opening well, of the we're opening of the show is with us too <laughs> yeah yeah so it was it's nice to see both Austin and Austin with a B at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it's known. Yeah. Um, uh, next up, um, Ubisoft uh, is not doing so great. 
lately in the news, they've not been having great sales and their stock plummeted and all that kind of stuff after they put out their not so great sales numbers. Um, and in particular, we're talking here about uh, Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope that apparently this was underperforming for them, at least upon release. Um, not terribly surprising for reasons we can talk about. I, I mean, Ubisoft has had to cancel some games and delay some games and and I think just not doing so great. Um, but this game came out around a bunch of other games that were big. Mm. I know for me, at least, I was interested to pick this up, but then... Splatoon really grabbed my attention. You know, I, I didn't not a big Pokemon person, but I know that's came out right afterwards. Some other really big games. Right. And then also the Ubisoft shoots itself in the foot. It puts its games on sale like a couple months out. Yeah. Every every time we talked about this game, we somebody would remind us not to buy it at release because they will. It will be half price in a few months. Um, Interesting. So, yeah, we have like a Pavlovian response to like Ubisoft releases, you know what I mean? <laughs> to just like delay gratification until like the price hits $10. Because, you know, fucking the first game was down to $10 like all the time in sales, mm-hmm. you know? And um, wow. I wonder if this would have been better if they released it like budget, you know what I mean? I mean, not that it deserved that, but it's like, I wonder if it would have done better if this was like a $40, 40? release or a $50 release, right? Um, you know? But yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's it's a shame because I mean we're part of the problem. I don't think any of us played it, so it's like, or at least the three of us. I did, you did. play it. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And that's why I got to say, like, it's disappointing that they underperformed. Granted, I actually didn't play the original, so hmm. I don't know if I really have much stake in saying. But I just said overall, it's a solid game. And not only that, but I just remember it was heavily advertised, like in almost every Nintendo Direct for like. A year, almost a year leading up to it. It's always mm-hmm. something sparks hope. So I, it just, in my mind, I'm like, oh man, this looks like this is going to be big. But, uh, mm-hmm. but the points you just brought up, I, I guess it uh, makes sense that um, maybe they didn't position this the best way they could have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Poor rabbits. I know. <laughs> maybe, maybe Rayman will save it uh, when this <laughs> DLC comes out. Yeah. And then uh, last up, talking about Mario some more. Um, apparently, there's been an email going out uh, from Nintendo sort of reminding people about Super Mario Odyssey. I, I haven't seen, like, I didn't get this email. I don't know if this is in certain regions or what, but it sounds like if you've played the game, maybe you get this email kind of reminding you about it, um, saying, you know, what were your favorite parts of Mario Odyssey? Maybe go play it again. And then there's some copy in it that kind of hints it there i guess it says but there may be even more out there still to be discovered perhaps it's worth hopping aboard the odyssey once more and taking the trip all over again so people are taking that as maybe a hint at a sequel or dlc although it could just be a copywriter trying to come up with a creative way to push mario in the year of mario movie um which is what my take would be but um, interesting yeah what do y'all think do you think I mean, they, they should make a sequel to the Super Mario Odyssey. Sure. Yeah, they should make a sequel, but it sure reads like DLC, right? Yeah, like, the whole idea of like, check it out because like, there might be new things. Yeah, open the game again, dust off the dust because and the, there are still more to be discovered makes it really feel like it's an expansion. I mean, maybe this is like the new dlc rollout they do after the mario kart stuff is done right or maybe even during like but we keep talking about how nso needs more stuff yes uh you know and so if they're going to be packaging in more dlc that would make a whole lot of sense i mean i would never have thought they would have done it with mario kart and then they fucking did so i think you know this game came out after mario kart on (laughs) on it's possible yeah yeah it's very possible that all this time later i mean it was a great huge seller for them and i think the other ones that got dlc and nso were like the two highest sellers with animal crossing and uh yeah i was gonna say like i forget how long in between animal crossing came out and the dlc did because i don't have a lot of experience um with keeping track that kind of stuff but usually i would think dlc comes out relatively soon after or a year and Mm -hmm. odyssey was 2017 with breath of the wild right yeah it was it was the summer so it you know we're at uh what five Five. and a half years yeah. mm-hmm. i've kind of got a theory about this uh Ooh, i think tell. that and this may this may uh rope into some of what we'll talk about in the in the main topic but it's like i really th- do think that the switch pro was like meant to be out at this point and i think a lot of games were being made to target 
higher spec hardware, which meant that a lot of games had to be delayed. Right. I think potentially one of those might have been whatever the follow up to Mario Kart was. And whenever they were like, oh, actually, we don't have, you know, our new Mario Kart is like a big expanded game or whatever. It was maybe built for Switch Pro or a successor. And then, because I mean, whenever they announced it, it was like, it wasn't like they had been developing it for years already, the DLC for it, the extra tracks. Like they're currently working on those now and they're all ports from the mobile game, right? So that to me kind of feels like, okay, we need to like do something for this huge install base of Mario Kart uh, at this point. Let's shelf the 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 sequel until whatever. Maybe we're seeing something similar with Mario where they're like, oh, we had a whole new 3D Mario mm. game planned, but it was built for Switch Pro. That's not around, so maybe let's start getting people working on like DLC for you know. So maybe that's why we're seeing some of this late stage DLC for these early games that they know have big install bases. Um, but that's kind of uh, that's a bit of a reach, I think. But it's it would kind of make sense. Uh, it's possible the pattern here. Yeah, yeah. My only take on um, I hope that's the case. Um, I want yeah. more Odyssey. Um, yeah, it's so fucking good. I want to. I would. I would love to discover more things if there were more <laughs> things to discover. Yeah, yeah, I did them all. And, and <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty like, sure I did nothing about? more for me to discover. I got 999 <laughs> moons. <or whatever. laughs> That's right. Give me more moons. My only take is that maybe this uh, this sentence, the but there may be even more out there still to be discovered, is maybe a, a mistranslation or an error in localization. Maybe it's like uh, return uh, to Odyssey um, and you can... Uh, you can discover rediscover Find shit you missed maybe yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. 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 rediscover yeah, yeah, yeah. uh rediscover the joy of odyssey or something yeah. something just tweaked it just a little bit that might um come when you translate something i really mm. think that it's probably just copy trying to make it sound interesting and then putting mario out because of the movie coming up but i hope that there's more 3d mario in stores so. yeah me too well, we'll find out someday, right? Eventually. <laughs> or not. <laughs> or, or not. We'll never by, know. by a lack of finding out, we will find <laughs> out. Um, but that does it for our, our news segment. Um, we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking all about The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, and what we hope and what we think might be coming with that. Yeah. All right. So, uh, the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is coming out May 12th this year. We're about four months away. And um, yeah, so we're going to be talking about it. We haven't heard much officially from Nintendo about this game. You know, they've put out three or four trailers over the last three or four years, whatever it's mm. been. And, um, you know, the trailers have been somewhat vague. But I expect that we'll get a big news dump in the next month or two. But this will be our chance to get out ahead of it and see, you know, if we're right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's our last chance to speculate before the info dump, uh, or the mass marketing push really begins. Um, yeah, maybe just like some wants and expectations and then what we think might be able to be improved from the first game. Um, some stuff like that. Yeah. And some, maybe some like Stephanie hinted at earlier, some trailer analysis and stuff like that. We'll, mm. I don't know that I feel super confident in my abilities to do that, but I know other people have done it and some summarized it on the internet. Mm. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I guess we can talk about just briefly, like the history of, of this and what they've told us and all of that kind of stuff. You know, I think the first we heard about this was in E3 of 2019. So, you know, we're at a good, what is that? Three and a half years ago. I can't do math mm -hmm. with um, something like that, that this game, we know that this game started as DLC for Breath of the Wild, and so that they started working on this in particular shortly after Breath of the Wild released in 2017. So mm -hmm. they've been working on this for approximately six years, right? Long ass time. I know like Breath of the Wild had a similarly long development, um, but you have to think in a big open world game like this, where there's all these like competing systems and mechanics and stuff that there's a lot of play testing you have to do to make sure that like nothing breaks the game. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. And uh, especially, you know, I'm kind of jumping ahead here, but like, especially seeing the ways that players have broken breath of the wild wide open, I'm sure also like had a bit of an impact on, on, you know, 
the, the developers as well, right? You know, like what, what, like we tested for all this stuff with the first game, but then we saw all these people like fucking using two metal cars to like fly through the air, you know, <laughs> like, you know, we didn't catch that one, you know what I mean? So it's like, I think that probably also led to like a, a way bigger like QC period on like trying to figure out exactly what you can do in this massive open world. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ju- I mean, we can take this very conversationally anywhere y'all want to, but like, um, you know, we have this question on here that I think is interesting about what, what t- turned this into from DLC into a game, you know, what, what turned this into this long development cycle? I mean, some of the things you just hinted at in that comment you just made, David could have been it, but what some, something they did, they discovered something, right. As they were making this alleged DLC, or, or I guess it was going to be DLC uh, that they're like, no, there's something here. And is it, the stuff we've seen of link going through ground. Do you think like, you know what I mean? Like that sort of weird sky thing, or was it like we should have, what if we added a few floating islands and then that turned into what if we had a whole new gigantic map in the sky or something? I don't know. (laughs) I do think a tiny part of it is just Nintendo's hubris. You know, Nintendo is a very prideful company. um, And they, they, everyone saw how successful breath of the wild was. So why wouldn't you want to consider a second game for it? Um, the DLC was very nice. I do feel like Nintendo is very exploratory. So it wouldn't surprise me. Number one, like financially, it makes sense to create a sequel. Uh, secondly, Nintendo is also really resourceful. So now turning a little bit of a positive, I'm not just going to insult them, <laughs> but um, think, think of how Ocarina of Time, how that was ex- just very revolutionary for the time. And then they reused the assets, but made a completely different game, Took put it completely on its head with Majora's Mask. Um, I mean, if, if I were part of Nintendo, and I know Nintendo's hard to predict, but if we've spent so much time creating that world, you know, we might want to spend some more time in there before we go ahead and create a yet another one, you know? Mm, totally. So I think that's part of it. I'm hoping it's more than just a bunch of empty sky islands because I don't think right. people will be very happy if that's the only change. Um, but I, I do think it, it you know, makes um, a se- like sense of for efficiency wise to at least can use that world one more time, if not twice more, depending if this ends up being a trilogy or not. Right. Yeah. Or uh, definitely it, it's gotta be, at, I feel like it's, you know, we, we know there are the sky islands, but it's like, again, mm-hmm. the first game was based so much of what made it so incredible for people was that sense of exploration and finding stuff new for the first time. So it's like, obviously we've got this new area in the sky to explore, but is like, is that going to be enough, you know, or was it like, maybe they were working on some sort of new mechanic uh, that they could use within this world and then realized like, Oh, we've got something really good. Let's turn this into a full new game and we better give them some more like terrain to explore on top of that. You know what I mean? So it wasn't just like an asset kind of swap or not assets. It's not reusing a lot of the same assets necessarily like they did with Majora's Mask. They had to kind of go in and flesh it out more and give more to the locales maybe. Or like another thing that Nintendo is good at is the like, um, duality of worlds like in previous games there's a light world or a dark world maybe not that drastic but the one of the things that i i hyper focus on um during might have been the first trailer i'm losing track is how mm-hmm. death mountain looks mm. or yeah what what, what what's different about it in in the trailer it's it's it just has like a bunch of i don't know if it's malice or like something but it don't look right <laughs> <laughs> it yeah, don't look yeah. right. Um, so I'm just wondering, so either something terrible happened to it or we're going to a completely different time period. I don't want to keep throwing out random theories up at the top, but it's just, um, you know, maybe they, they've they created like a, either an alternate form um, of this Hyrule or, or like you said, it could be Sky Islands. We could go below the surface. Yeah, I would actually like to come back on that just a little bit because I also have theories about um, possibly... Uh, time travel of multiple worlds or however yeah. however things um i think you know thinking about uh kind of what you were saying stephanie and uh, like what nintendo does is uh, nintendo does this a lot typically the first reveal of a new game in a series is a story trailer so i'm mm-hmm. thinking they probably worked on mechanics as dlc and it's like a conversation of how does this DLC connect to the larger world and the larger narrative and the larger story? 
and the more they uh, answer those questions of how it connects, they're like, this doesn't, this feels like more than just a, an add on. This feels oh. bigger. And so that's why we have like, you know, that creature that grabs Link at the beginning. And then we have uh, in later trailers, we have the, the maybe the seven tiers that we're going to get. Um, mm. And maybe as they try to, you know, tack on mechanics to extend the life of Breath of the Wild, they're like, ah, this doesn't, this doesn't fit. Uh, like story wise, it doesn't fit. Um, and so they make a new game. Yeah. 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 That's, I hadn't thought about it in that way of like, of the push from DLC to full game being one of story, right? Um, being or being story driven rather. Um, Cause you know, Zelda games aren't like, They've never had like a big cohesive. It's very rare you see sequels to games that are outright sequels to games in the Zelda series, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think, uh, and I think, you know, we'll talk uh, in a little bit about um, things that I think that everybody thought Breath of the Wild was a masterpiece, but I think everybody pretty much had the same issues with the game, right? Was like breakable weapons. Uh, you know, a lot of people pushed back on that, right? Like I didn't hate it, but it's whatever. Breakable weapons, uh, lack of traditional dungeons, um, I think was a big one. Mm -hmm. And then also story. It was like, because the game can be played in any order, story almost like took a back seat and it was like all told through these flashbacks and like didn't really have the ability to like use like act beats or whatever to like heighten the story. Everything was kind of like, you know, it, because of the nature of how it was told, I think the story wasn't as impactful for some people. So I can definitely see if they suddenly found a really great plot element or like a bit of the yeah. lore that they wanted to expand on being like, oh, shit, this really deserves its own thing rather than just be a DLC. Uh, and then if you're expanding it into a full game, you got to add more shit. Right. Um, yeah. So that seems like a pretty good pipeline for, for that for me. Yeah, maybe the DLC was meant to be, you know, post the end of breath of the wild, right? Like a little, a mm. new story beat that then was like, the more they worked on it, it turned into its own massive thing. Yeah. 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 Um, so I don't know. What do we, what do we, we what we know so far? We kind of talked about the sky thing and the sort of ability to move through rock, which I don't really fully know what that's called yet. So it's hard to refer to it. Um, and I think that's recently, just them watching people on Twitter like stasis rocks and use them to fly across the entire map. And they're like, we should just make that a mechanic in the game. Well, yeah, there's the thing you fly on, but isn't it true that you can like go through, you know yeah, what I mean? Can, like you can climb yeah. through rocks. Like, I, I don't know what Stephanie, go ahead. Sorry. Oh no, I, I don't think I could really describe it any yeah. better. Yeah. I you don't have a name for it. Either. And he like literally goes through the floor of the Island and you appears on top. I'm like, Whoa, yeah. okay. Link's this, a ghost. Yeah. this is the sequel to <laughs> B-52's Rock Lobster. It's Rock Elevator. <laughs> rock, rock Elevator. <laughs> it wasn't just sense. an and elevator. Then, or wait, no. Anyway. We, yeah. We've got the, what, the arm, right? The arm. We have a Link arm that's corrupted, for lack of a better word, where that it seems to be doing things that the tablet did in Breath of the Wild. And what we've seen two, am I, I'm, I'm not like, dreaming about this right there's two versions of link that they've shown in the trailer kind of one yeah. with this corrupted arm and short hair and one with that looked more like the i, I might like be this. wrong but they kind of seem do they both have the corrupted arm oh, or because i know there's one where he's got the like wild long hair right and i think that's where like and then one that looks a lot more like breath of the wild link you know um so i think that could be a couple things that could be like the game starts with the Breath of the Wild Link that we've seen, like the one who looks a lot more on model. And then there's a big inciting incident or whatever early on. And then for the rest of the game, we're playing as like wild hair boy Link, right? <laughs> um, uh, or I think where that's where a lot of the speculation about time traveling has come from, right? Um, like that we're kind of going back and like, you'd be able to go back and forth between these two kind of different iterations of Link. Um, you know, whether, whether, and that would be kind of a way to bring in some of those alternate, you know, if it's like 200 years in the future or like before the war that you're going to or whatever, right? Like that could maybe explain like why he looks a little bit different and it would change up the actual geography of the place because all these like ruins would be full towns or whatever, right? Exactly. Nintendo is very intentional about how characters look. If, if, even if it's yeah. the change of a hair length, it, I, we still can't determine if it's same link or different link, but something happened. There's a difference. These are also similar to what you were talking about. This is speculative territory. I there there are two versions of Link, 
um, the first time we see Link in Tears of Jesus, that sequel to the Breath of the Wild trailer in 2019. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go back hard, to that. Calling to it that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we see Link uh, that we're all familiar with from the end of Breath of the Wild. He's in the blue tunic um, and he has the he has the cape and the hood. Um, it's only into later trailers do we see the more wild Link with longer hair. Um, right. So, so maybe there's there's some time um, that elapses. Maybe it's in the future, um, or maybe it's in the past. Um, my what what I what I want is David. What you said, which is maybe this is an element of link to the past or a link between worlds, where you actually are switching between these links. Uh, maybe in real time, hopefully, hopefully with limited load times on on the switch, um, where it changes the geography. So you have a rock in front of a cave, and you switch be- to the old link, and the cave is open. And you go oh, in and you switch. That's back a pretty cool. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a cool mechanic. It's something that m- makes me super afraid that the switch is just going to like shudder under the. <laughs> fucking, I know. You know, like not be able to do that. Yeah, just yeah. combust in itself. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it reminds me of you know, and unfortunately, Skyward Sword is not my favorite game. But one thing I loved about it was the time shift stone. I'm not saying that's coming back. But that kind of almost oh, is a similar that. mechanic where you're visiting and re- you know going back to past and present with some mechanism, which yeah. is yeah. pretty awesome. That, that's a great point, and and thanks for bringing up Skyward Sword because that was one of my favorite mechanics in that game. Uh, that was one of my favorite dungeons, right? Um, with the weird alien things that looked like the Reddit symbol. Oh yeah, the mine. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was like that whole section. I think you could totally have built an entire game around that mechanic, right? Um, which makes a lot of sense. And you know, if you want to talk about mechanics being taken from Skyward Sword, like so many of the mechanics from Breath of the Wild were taken from Skyward Sword, like the stamina bar, um, you know, um, a lot of a lot of like the co- kind of collecting and cooking mechanics and stuff like that. Um, maybe not so much cooking, but you know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like there was a lot that was taken from that. Um, and it'd be really cool if they brought that back. Yeah. Maybe that's the power of the the, the corrupted arm. Maybe mm-hmm. it has the the time stone, time stone element to it. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. And Doctor Strange hides it away. What do you guys <laughs> think of um, dehydrated Ganon? That's a something <laughs> we saw in the very first trailer, but we never saw that again after the fact. Well, let's get that yeah. by some water. <laughs> yeah, need <laughs> <laughs> some agua pura. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah that I mean, first I, trailer was so interesting. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. No, please, Patrick, please continue. I just, that whole trailer, everything we've seen since then has felt unrelated, like, mm-hmm. to that first. I mean, not yep. entirely, but, like, you know, it felt like, oh, we're going underground. It felt like Zelda might be real important, and she's got a new haircut. And then, you know, <laughs> what is this enemy? And then everything else has been r- climbing through rocks <laughs> and riding on a big sky thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd love to be wrong, or maybe I hope this is true i can't really tell but that feels like the opening of the game right you know i mean i'm sure like Mm -hmm. i mean that was so shown so long ago at this point that that might not not even be in the game at this point you know what i mean like you know uh (laughs) but it's like that definitely feels like a setup for everything especially with seeing at the end of that trailer you see the hyrule castle like lift up into the sky you know which would be a great inciting kind of event for all these sky things. So I think it would even make sense if it's not at the very beginning of the game, it would maybe be like, we've got our regular link section and you start the game and it's like, Oh, this is like what DLC for breath of the wild would have been. Right. And then it kind of, you get to whatever story beat that is where they go underground. And then that's where all that cataclysmic shit happens and all the sky islands show up. And then that's when we do the time jump into like future link. I think that's another possibility. That definitely makes the most sense as far as where that fits in the game timing wise more towards the beginning. Mm -hmm. Part of me likes to believe that because they only showed dehydrated again in the beginning and never again since, because this is going to be a more story driven game. Uh, But is this Ganondorf from Twilight Princess? Maybe. Mm. Um, It's definitely going to explain malice more because um, not to kind of steal what, um, Andy from uh, the uh, Champions cast, Zelda Champion cast, I think their podcast is, is Malice isn't 
really explained very well in the first game. And I'm bringing that up because I, I do agree. I mean, it's not like I lose sleep over it, but Malice <laughs> is this goop that's everywhere and it's an eyeball. And in traditional Zelda fashion, you shoot the eyeball and it goes away. And yeah. it's part of the calamity. And I don't know, like, I feel like that there's it's going to be explained a lot more. Mm. It'd be great to see Story take like a front seat uh in this game i think i think that would be really great especially because there's like a a lot of questions raised in the first game that were never really answered and a lot of like lore kind of left on the table um and like uh, age of calamity had a a chance to explain a lot of that and then kind of decided to do its own thing instead you know what i mean uh so maybe they were like oh okay now we have a chance to like actually delve into some of that stuff right i only have uh to say uh more water-based uh puns um, which is uh, Ganon <laughs> needs to learn the way of the water. Oh, nice. Avatar two, yeah, Avatar two. Um, yeah. I he, he, here's here's what I hope. Um, this is uh, since me, I've been watching Dragon Ball a lot. I hope that old uh, long hair Link is Ganon, Ganondorf. I hope we uh, we play whoa as Ganondorf, and at some point um, there is a connection to the. Uh, tri- Triforce of Power and um, Ganon or Link is like split um, between. It's just like a uh, in Kami and Piccolo and Dragon Ball, they are the same creature, but they split good and evil. Mm. Um, so maybe there's um, upon touching this thing, maybe there's uh, they come back together, or maybe they've always been split. I would like, or to, he needs I, a vessel to put his like life essence yeah. into. Yeah. I would like to link. see some yeah, yeah. really strong character connection. I don't think Nintendo will do this, but I would love to see mm. character connection between like Link and Ganon to build some of that uh, that conflict and relationship. I think that's brilliant. I would absolutely yeah. love to see that. And um, you've mentioned the Triforce because I don't believe Triforce is mentioned um, in Breath of the Wild. So is that something? We're, we're hoping or we think I'll uh, come back. I, I didn't. didn't think yeah, so. you're right. I didn't even think about that. You guys didn't put in the cheat code and unlock the Triforce and Breath of the Wild. Come on. <laughs> we all were able to do that. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think that's great. I think if you're going to do that, go ho- whole hog with the Triforce, you know, like then, uh, you know, that'd be great if there was like three versions of Link, one that has like Ganon within him and then one that has like elements of Zelda even too, right? And becomes like a more magic based character right you know like maybe they kind of have all different abilities uh between them uh, or i mean of course what i would love is just playable fucking zelda i've wanted yes, that since yeah. i saw that yeah. first trailer right is like you know if not a full-on co-op adventure which would be fucking incredible but like i think it would be awesome to be able to play as zelda in this especially with that opening trailer she just seems like She's got a lot of agency. They're down there together on this adventure. You know, you don't really see that in the first game too much. Uh, it's all like kind of her within her status of being a princess or whatever. And here in these kind of after times, uh, she's been holding down the fucking fort for a hundred years, uh, you know, fighting Ganon for the first game. So it'd be great to uh, get your hands on her. But I mean, um, again, that's just something that hasn't been extrapolated on any further in any of the later trailers so it's every time a new trailer comes out like that theory gets lesser and lesser in my mind right <laughs> yeah um well i we can jump all around but there, there's something you said early on david that i want to get everybody's opinion about which is do you hope that this game uh is choose gets rid of breakable weapons or shrines um because i know those things were somewhat i don't know what the word is uh controversial you know, keep, controversial that's a good word i hope they i hope we keep breakable weapons yeah me yeah. too yeah i i wouldn't mind it um if anything if they want to appease fans not that nintendo i think really is <laughs> pays that much attention to that maybe a forging system where you still breakable weapons but maybe you could upgrade them so they last a little bit longer or they're a little bit stronger mm. until they break like it doesn't have to be one or the other, like only unbreakable weapons or breakable weapons. Well, maybe a craft system, maybe. Um, if you Maybe if you break like four halberds or something, you can use the shards of them to make an unbreakable halberd or whatever, you know? So it's like as you're going through the different kinds of weapons, the more they break down, the more it like leads to a perfect version that will never break. I think that's hmm. maybe a nice middle ground. Yeah, that or, you know, in addition to maybe a traditional Zelda item or two could come back. 
um, well, I think a hook shot's officially rendered obsolete if Link can go through walls, but you know, like any <laughs> other fly. type. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and as far as shrines, I mean, maybe, uh, give or take, I just don't think that the divine beast would make a lot of sense to do again. And that's where I hope maybe traditional d- dungeons may be in place of that. I don't know if that's related to the seven tiers, like collect, go to seven place. I don't know, but Yeah. I hope we still have shrines because I really enjoy the bite size element of that, of playing. It's one thing that was so fun about the first game would be like, you know, you save on a shrine, you beat the shrine, you find another one, you save and quit. Mm -hmm. Um, And that was a really nice like switch, you know, your portable kind of like have time for this. So I kind of hope they're still in it. And like you said, Stephanie, then that there is instead of the divine beasts, which didn't feel like satisfying, they just felt like it's maybe a shrine, right? Like that we have seven would make sense. Super shrines. Yeah. 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 Seven would make sense. Seven more traditional kind of areas of, of, with puzzles and such. Yeah. We've brought this up before and I don't really know how you do it right with an open game like this, but it's like, I think that a lot of people really did miss that progression of going from dungeon to dungeon and unlocking stuff in a row, right? Like from the previous Zelda games. And it's okay. This doesn't have to be like all previous Zelda games, right? I think that's what why Breath of the Wild is like the highest selling Zelda game of all time was that they took these big big risks on it and like, you know, really did something different. Um, And I think that it wouldn't, I think shrines are so like wrapped up in the identity of Breath of the Wild that I don't think you could do a sequel to Breath of the Wild without having shrines. Yeah, yeah, with none, right? So I think like I think that those still will be a thing and they make for a great little thing you can find on your map and then go to, you know, for an open world thing. It just makes sense to have little challenges like that. So I think those will definitely be in there. But I'd love if there was some way that they could also work some of that just progression of both story and uh, like challenge, you know, uh, of, you know, just make some sort of actual like, point A to point B to point C sort of situation other than just like do as much as you want before you go fight the boss. You know what I mean? Um, and so that's obviously a really hard balancing act to take, uh, but it would maybe explain why they've taken six fucking years to figure it out. Uh, <laughs> you know? Well, you mentioned um, a key word for me is bosses. Um, I was okay with the shrines. I was honestly okay with the breakable weapons really annoyed me in the beginning, but I, I got over it. It's fine. Same. Yeah. But it was the bosses where I was kind of like, uh, okay, Blight Ganon here, Blight Ganon there, <laughs> Blight Ganon here, there, everywhere, Blight Ganon. <laughs> yeah, so, like, yeah. it, it wasn't terrible. It's, you know, the, the, the fighting of the boss was still fun, so I don't want to poo-poo it necessarily, but right. I miss the, the variety. I mean, each time you just end up shooting the thing in the eye and then you go hit it, like, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and in in past uh, Zelda games, I, I feel that great bosses are kind of a big key to the puzzle here. I mean, we're thinking about big ones like Kalactos or Star-Lord or Phantom mm-hmm. Ganon. I mean, we might not get a Phantom Ganon, but, like, I, I feel like a, div- a diverse set of dungeons or super shrines would yield diverse bosses, which would kind of satisfy some of the nostalgia we have for the older type Zelda games, but not necessarily mm. go all the way. I don't know. Maybe you get a tier after each boss that you beat. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, and so it's like, you know, cause we've seen in some of those, in some of the footage, you know, Link has got this kind of like satchel thing with these kind of glowing, what almost look like drops uh, like on his person. So maybe it's like, you know, each boss will give you a different tier, which either can increase you at the same rate for each one. So you could beat them in any order or each one gives you a slightly different ability, making it to where other bosses Mega are Man. maybe easier to beat. If you, <laughs> Yeah, like Mega Man. Exactly. Like if you decide to go in this order, this is like the easy mode order. You mm. know what I mean? Or there are more difficult ways to go do it. Right. Um, but it's like but again, it's so hard. And that's something that I think Pokemon uh, Scarlet and Violet kind of failed on as well right is like is like they open it up but really there's only one yeah. real way to do it where it actually makes sense <laughs> you know what i mean uh so that's a that's a hard thing to do but i think like if they could get it right that would be really really impressive so we're we're pro uh breakable weapons 
I think uh, so. Keep the shrines. Please give us bosses. Yeah, no no divine beasts. No divine beasts. Yeah. yeah. They, they can chill out in the background until they need to be used again. It's no problem. Yeah. That's what I think. I Keep them around for like giant mech robot Gundam suits. You can jump in whenever you want. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Do you think we'll see um, either champions, the current or the deceased champions? I would love to. Yeah. I, I think we, I think they're, they were really fleshed out characters. So it'd make a lot of sense to bring them back. Especially in the DLC. So yeah. Yeah. I, ho- I hope, yeah. you know, I assume if, if we do get bosses that are uh, guarding these seven tiers, I hope maybe some of those are like um, uh, malice champions, like champions with malice. Uh, they're like uh, uh, bad champions. I don't know how to evil. <laughs> Just champions. like how, how like Link also is kind of corrupted. Like yeah. the champions have similar corruption on them. Yeah. That's cool. Nice. Yeah. yeah like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting bumped. <laughs> yeah, should be fun. Uh, also, before we move away from the idea of dungeons, uh, if let's say that we have dungeons, will would you like them to be like discoverable in some of the the worlds, like in the mountains or in a desert or like uh, on top, or would you be okay with like a teleporter that takes you to another to a dungeon? Do you want to? Do you want them to be discoverable um, or? like connected to the world. What do you guys think? I mean, discoverable would be ideal. I feel it's more, more fun that way. And it's in, in tone with, you know, exploration with breath of the wild, but because we are working with the same world to our knowledge, I'm not going to cry about it. If I have to teleport to a dungeon. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's like the seamlessness I think is, is pretty crucial here, right? Like keeping like a consistent world um, that feels real and feels like the ge- the geography actually makes sense. You know what I mean? Like uh, building out the entrances to these places in ways to where like maybe you can kind of like see bits of what would be the dungeon later on, but you're not able to access it and kind of like giving it a real sense of space within here, I think would especially if there are new things that have popped up since the last time that would kind of spice up some of, you know, the world that we've already like explored from head to toe by playing this game a bunch whenever it first came out. Right. Um, So I think that would be a good way to kind of shake it up a little bit. Maybe. Yeah. That's exactly what I want. Um, What I would be afraid Mm -hmm. of, like maybe these rock elevators take you to the dungeon in the sky. And then Uh, there's a teleporter that then takes you to the action. Uh, actual dungeon. I mean, either way, you can. It looks like you could just jump off the fucking islands and fly <laughs> all the way down, right? You know, so it's like, you know, at least it's somewhat contiguous from what we've seen in the trailers. You know, you brought up something earlier. I think crafting is a pretty obvious thing to bring into this game. I'm not a huge crafting guy, to be honest, but I think it's like pretty obvious that that's going to be in this game. You know, especially if they do want to expand the the weapon breaking mechanic and give that some purpose. I think crafting makes a lot of sense to bring into this game. Um, we kind of had that with cooking already, but I think having that for like weapons or upgrades uh, would be a, a pretty solid addition. Um, and people fucking love crafting, man. People go crazy for crafting. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole game off of Animal Crossing. Do we keep the same uh, the same crafting music or the same cooking music too? Oh, I was just thinking about it. It was playing in my head. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I still want I still want pixelated food if it turns out super <laughs> shitty. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I think it, I think it'll be interesting. I think we'll probably see a lot of like different kinds of like mounts as well, past just like a horse. You know, we got the motorcycle in the last game uh, with the DLC, and we've already seen this like weird metal triangle that Link rides on in the sky. Uh, so there'll be something <laughs> like that, right? But I think you know, whenever uh, Skyward Sword got a release, everybody's talking about loft wings. I think that would be really, really great, especially since so much focus is on the sky and stuff up there. Uh, having, Ride those like, dragons. Oh my God. What a cool idea. (laughs) (laughs) That would be nuts. It'd be cool to have a boss fight on the back of a dragon also. Yeah. Yeah. Bayonetta style. Yeah. Uh, David metal triangles is very funny. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Sorry. I can't stop. laughing. Yeah. It's very funny. (laughs) I don't know how else to describe it. It's It's a a, a bird. (laughs) It's obviously in a bird shape. No, but it's like, but it's like, it's, it's, it does. It looks hard. It looks stiff. Yeah. It really does. uh, it, it's just very Flat funny. Bird. I was like, yeah, stiff. that's exactly what that looks like. From now on, I will refer to it as a stiff hard bird. Will that make yeah. you happy? <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, it does. <laughs> okay, so so the, the uh, stiff hard, hard bird uh, is what yeah. it's officially called at uh, Canon. 
Um, is this stiff hardbird sounds like a guy's name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm he's, stiff hardbird. He's a detective. <laughs> um, do you guys think this is a, like movable or is it like a, a, a transport device, like a, like a, like a rail system that takes you from point A to point B. You can jump off at any time, but you can't, uh, you mm. can't move it. Well, that would differentiate if they do bring loft wings that would differentiate that. Maybe there's like this kind of system of these triangles that go up and down. <laughs> and then on top of that, then like later in the game, you unlock loft wings and you get like more freedom to move around. Right. And discover like little mini islands or something in the sky that maybe have their own shrines on them. Yeah. I have to like play the trailer again while we're talking. Cause I want to see this. Yeah. Metal triangle the again. Metal and, triangle. Yeah. And, I forgot if it moves at all. Um, so keep talking. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I don't know. It looks pretty stiff to me. Uh, it doesn't move in the trailer. Well, it, it the, the camera pans. So I'm having a, a hard time telling if it's moving or if it's just the camera playing a trick. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm, I'm literally I'm telling going you, frame, it's a triangle. It's no, it's got to be moving. His, his cape is flapping. All right. I don't know. So mm. maybe, this, yeah, just. It shows how little they've shown, right? Like we don't yeah. even know how the stiff metal triangle works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're going to get a whole direct just about these stiff metal triangles. Uh, <laughs> the whole tree house on it. Yeah. <laughs> well, Took a team that- of programmers f- f- five years to make this triangle. <laughs> um, yeah. He kind of lands on it and like, then it cuts to the like logo. So it's hard to know, but yeah. Yeah. Um, well, he, he go ahead. Uh, I want to make something. more jokes about the stiff uh, <laughs> triangle. Sorry, uh, he jumps off because it's too stiff. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Stephanie, what are some of the theories that you're aware of based on stuff we've seen, or or what what have you that that maybe you could share with us? I'll start with um, probably the biggest one, so to speak. And I'm looking at the the, the logo with the two dragony type things is that people think that there will be more uh, zone eye in this mm. game. Um, while I don't want to put all e- my eggs in one basket. Cause when I saw the very first trailer, I'm like, Oh my gosh, twilight, 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 like Midna, come back. <laughs> like, mm. um, I, I do think that the zone eye playing a part in this game is, is definitely viable. There is no proof, but it's viable just based off of a, the design and B when you look at creating a champion, the zone I do exist. They talk about it in the book, but there's very little known about it. And if Nintendo wants to, ex- you know, extend Breath of the Wild into a duology or a trilogy, and they're looking for additional lore, they have this like race or whatever that went away that they've never talked about, and they could just—that's a whole, tr- you know, treasure like a treasure trove of, of content they could use. So, what do you guys think about the Zonai involvement in Tears of the Kingdom? And yeah, to be clear, I, the Zonai is that area in Breath of the, or that's that's where we hear about, or that's our understanding of them. It's like that sort of ruiny area. Yeah, yeah sort of they've the got jungle. some like statues of these sort of uh, cr- things the that Zonai are on creatures. the logo for, mm-hmm. for right. the new game. Yeah, I think it, I think it'd be really interesting. It'd be it'd be a pretty big swing. I mean, because you know that's not something that like the layman like who played breath of the wild, like is even aware that that word exists, you know, it's like the real Zelda heads, like are kind of that look into the lore, like really know about it. So I think that'd be like a pretty big swing to bring them in based on like these little tiny, like Easter eggs that they kind of peppered throughout the first game. But I think it would be cool, especially if it was like a full new race of creatures of some way, you know, cause I mean, we've got, you know, Gorons and Zoras and all this kind of stuff. And I think it'd be really interesting to like bring in a new race of uh, creatures into the game. Um, <clears throat> so that, that definitely would be a really cool way to do it uh, as far as I'm concerned. That, I mean, those, those symbols do look like that now that you have pointed that out, I believe it. Yeah. You know? Maybe we learn about what happened to them. Maybe we actually mm-hmm. see a zone eye rather than just their symbols. Um, maybe the, maybe that's the, that the green hand that's holding down dehydrated Ganon. Maybe that's mm. a, a Zonai hand um, mm. to like stop. Or maybe that's who we see in the past, right? Like uh, if, if long hair link is past link and that's him in a different era, maybe that's what that era is, right? Maybe link yeah. is a Zonai. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just making shit up at this point. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like she, there was Sheikah. I feel like there were kind of like two different 
kinds of iconography we would see throughout the world. It was like Zonai and Sheikah, right? Mm -hmm. And we've definitely got a lot of the Sheikah stuff. And first game was very Sheikah focused with the slates and the teardrops coming down onto the onto the thing and everything, right? Whenever you go to a, a tower. So maybe that's like, you know, just another race of people in and of themselves that have their own kind of technology that kind of create like the game mechanics for this game, right? Now, here's a very outlandish one, and I, I just think it's absolute nonsense, but it would be like my greatest, like kind of a nightmare, so to speak, if this were to be true is, so if you, you know, look at the map and all the, you know, the names of places, they're all names of previous game locations, mm -hmm. characters, um, just everywhere and there was a, one of the memories where Zelda is inducting Link as a knight and she's referencing the embers of twilight and yeah time travel so one theorist is like what if all of those past games were actually truly just legends and doesn't really exist and this is the real hyrule and i'm like no <laughs> no <laughs> that's that it was a dream the whole time yeah, that would make more sense than the official yeah. canon. <laughs> you know, like, it would, but, no. <laughs> yeah, I think <clears throat> I do think there's something to that, though, on this game being kind of like a mashup of like other games ideas. Right. Like, I think, you know, I mean, you could fucking scan an amiibo and be Wolf Link in the first one. Right. Like, let's like give that an actual like canonical reason for that to exist. You know what I mean? Uh, or like have something like that. Don't have to be that exactly, but I, I do I do like the idea of it being kind of a mashup game, right? I, I do want to bring something up before we wrap up this conversation of on like just technically speaking, like are we worried about this game? Is this like you know, we've been running into a lot of games recently that have really pushed the Switch to its limits. And we talked earlier about you know, the Switch Pro had been rumored for a really long time. I think the kind of like presiding theory is that the Switch OLED was originally supposed to be the Switch Pro and the chip shortage like caused that to not be able to be a thing. Um, you know, potentially some of this development time was spent on them trying to D or like make it to where like this works perfectly on original Switch hardware and not a, not a Pro model. Um, you know, are, are, are you guys worried about this game with this expanded scope? Like, being able to run on this like tablet with like, you know, tech in it from 2015. Right. Uh, are we worried about that at all? I don't personally know because I just feel like Nintendo is not going to do that. You know what I mean? I feel like they're, they're so good at squeezing everything out of this and maybe that's why maybe they did have to scale some things down or back or whatever. And maybe that's partly why it's taken so long, but I don't think they're going to put out a game that doesn't run optimally. Now, maybe there will be long loading times. Um, yeah. Like if there is, you know, I don't know when that would be, you know, maybe when you're going through the clouds or, or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You like, just see um, like white on the screen for a while as you're going through clouds. I could, I could definitely see there being some issues like that, but hopefully not like frame rate or, or I don't know. Mm. Yeah. I hope that Nintendo does something like what modern, uh, games do for loading screens. Often there's no loading screen, but there's like a sequence when you shimmy through like a tight space mm -hmm. in order to move to the next section. And all that is doing is loading assets that to the next section. And so I hope maybe Nintendo does something like that as you're taking the elevator um, rather than having a loading screen, it is loading the assets, uh, you know, above out of the player view. Love that scene in the last of us. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like Joel shimmying through so they yeah. could load in the set loading uh, TV <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I think there's something to be said too about how Breath of the Wild originally was a Wii U game right and it ended up being cross release uh, and that was probably a big reason why that game was delayed to make it work on the Switch make it run optimally on the Switch but that game was built the world and the mechanics were built for older hardware uh with the wii u now the wii u wasn't like that much wii u to switch wasn't that much of a jump you know what i mean but this is a game that they do have the opportunity to like build ground up for this hardware um and so i wonder if that will show itself in any way that the game is like kind of portrayed or any the way the mechanics work I mean, also just to jump into like, again, sorry, but like it started as DLC. So maybe they were even targeting 
Wii U at the very beginning. Um, and then maybe when they decided it was a sequel, whenever that was, they were just targeting base switch because at that point there wasn't a switch mm. pro. So if there was ever, I mean, who knows, maybe Nintendo has been playing on a switch pro for 20, 20 something since, yeah. you know, forever. We don't know, but I do feel like given the length of time, they probably have been working towards it being a plain vanilla switch game, but I don't mm-hmm. know. All I know, you know, is Zelda. I mean, it, it next to Mario are one of the most beloved IPs Nintendo owns, and I don't think they would dare release it, um, at least to the glitchy mess like Pokemon Scarlet and Violet will. Right. I, I do think there'll be some frame rate chugging, like when you set a field on fire. Like you know, I just feel like that part might ha- might still happen, um, but I. I, I I'm not necessarily worried. If anything, it's just like, I hope whatever they did that took them six years to make this game, it was, is worth it. I don't know (laughs) what it is, but I hope it's worth the wait. I'll be tempted to play this game. um, Tears of the kingdom on an emulator. Hmm. Oh, right. I thought you were like, I'm not quite sold on tears of the kingdom. (laughs) No, I'm going to play that shit. I'm going to shoot out of this game. Um, (laughs) But like breath playing breath of the wild in 4k uh is it's beautiful it's it always it, it's just like a great experience um mm-hmm. and we'll see we'll see we'll see what the performance is like and that that'll be hard too because i think all of the mods for breath of the wild and all of like the 4k gameplay of breath of the wild is based on the wii u version you know wii u is a lot easier to emulate than switches on pc mm-hmm. right so it'll be it'll be interesting to see how quickly you know fan hacks of this game like come out right uh you know uh or or even what that would look like um uh but yeah i'm I, i'm not i'm not too worried personally um i think you know like you said patrick it's breath or, and and stephanie it's like breath of the wild like has the luxury of not having to like come out at the same time as the anime or like cards or something like that like game freak had you know like they had to like do a worldwide release of all their fucking merchandise. Like they're just like, we're just going to put this out when we feel like it's good. Right. So I think <laughs> it's definitely got to have that Nintendo polish on it. And uh, it would be very surprising if it didn't. I just really hope that it's like, it's got another like, Oh shit. Like aha moment of like, mm. you know, cause that's what, when I think of breath of the wild, I think of just like being floored by the, just the the majesty of the thing you know like it was this huge world to explore you could climb anything that was so clutch to the experience as being able to just like traverse every single inch of the map if you wanted to right and so like <clears throat> obviously that's going to be back because it's set in the same hyrule but it's like i really really hope personally that there's something that we haven't seen in any of these trailers yet that's a big part of this game or, or stuff that we haven't even been able to like speculate, you know, like I really want to be like surprised with this game uh, and not just have it be a retread. I I have a lot of faith in the team, um, uh, especially given that this game has been out for a while and a lot of people have complaints, even though a lot of people also deem it a masterpiece. Uh, So I I have a lot of faith in the development team. It's just, I'm so curious as to what that's going to be. Yeah, I I hear you because there's a lot of wonderful games where their sequels, they aren't bad. They're just more of the same thing. So again, not bad, just more of the same thing. And I I agree with you. Like when I look at Zelda's history, they're not afraid to try something different with Zelda. I mean, look at the Mm -hmm. twists and turns when they went with art style with Wind Waker, even though that wasn't really popular at the time, but now people love it. Yeah. And go, you know, the uh, motion controls, whether you love it or hate it with Skyward Sword. So I feel like they, they are willing to, ma- you know, take risks and make things different with the Zelda franchise. So I'm going to put my faith in them. Mm, you heard Labo, it here first. Uh, yeah. Labo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, VR, no. yeah. Uh, and uh, skateboarding. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do. I do. Like we need to wrap this up here in the next minute or two, but like, I do think David, you're right. And I, or I mean, I think we all know this in our gut that there is something they're not showing us mm-hmm. that they've been so vague about this game. Uh, you know, sometime in the next few months, they're likely to reveal what that is. This is a Are mechanic. There- that, I don't know if that, it's a mechanic what- or visuals like, uh, yeah, I don't know. What do you could be any of the above? I think, mm. I don't think it has to be a mechanic. I, I- 
I think it's going to be a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. I think we're going to see a lot of expansion of the story. I think we are going to see a new, a big mechanic. And then <clears throat> on top of that, <clears throat> just geographically, right? It's like we've seen Sky Islands. There's got to be something more than than just that. Not that I think they're just going to fill these with nothing, but it's like, you know, that sense of exploration and like wonder is like so crucial to how what made that game work. So how is that going to show itself, right? Mm-hmm. Well, um, is that it? With yeah, I think we're we're good. <laughs> yeah, do, do you have any 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 closing thoughts you would want to get out there before we end, Stephanie? Um, just you know, looking forward uh, to May twelfth. I will probably be sick from work that day. <laughs> yeah, uh, I feel it coming. A lot too. of people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know, and um, you know, hopefully, I can connect with you guys maybe after the direct. Um, I would love to kind of run down the list of like what we guessed to see what we got right or wrong. That'd be fun. totally. But yeah, thank you yeah. for having me, and thank you for being very flexible and accommodating. You guys are great. Oh, you are great. Oh, for thank sure. You. Yeah, we uh, uh, I, I know you're on a, a bit of a time crunch, um, uh, so we, we won't have you for the next segment. But uh, before you go, yes, absolutely. We, we loved having you on. Thank you so much for joining us. And is there anything that you would want to uh, plug? Like, where can people find you online? Sure. People can find me on the internets on Twitter and Instagram. Twitter is mostly my my gaming and book stuff uh, at Klimov, K-L-I-M-O-V underscore author. You'll find me on the Boss Rush podcast um, and my articles on Another Zelda podcast and BossRush.net. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. Thank you, Stephanie. And we're going to take another break. And when we come back, we'll talk about the games we've been playing recently. Okay, so this week I finished playing Wayward Strand, which I talked about. Pretty short game. I think it took me about four hours. But um very, very satisfying game in a lot of ways. Um, narrative. We talked about it before. You're on an airship. It's a hospital. You're a 15 year old girl who's forced to go there by your nurse mom. And it just, I really enjoyed my time with it. The way the the story kind of comes together. I think it's like approaching this narrative genre unto itself that like, it doesn't quite a hundred percent nail. Cause it's, Mm. new of this idea of like things are happening and you can watch them happen and change them a little bit. Cause there were some times where I'm like, I'm here, <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, but I can't force a change because it was like a key story event or whatever, but it felt like you should, but it was really cool. I really liked it. Super chill. I love the Australian accents. And then I beat that and I, I fired up 1980 X cause I Ooh, got that nice. in something. Um, I don't know. I really enjoyed the f- beat 'em up section and sort uh, of the this pixel. Game, yeah. Yeah. I remember you talked about this years ago, Matthew. Yep. And then there's like, I Back presumably in the 80s, you talked about this, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, got, like a bunch of different games within a game. I hate shmups. I, I just, I, I t- there's a shmup section and I could not, I just was dying and it got frustrated and I set the game down because I'm not good at shmups and, it's pretty forgiving because it's a modern game, but um, I don't know. I don't know if I can do it. So I then instead I fired up ukulele and the impossible layer. Uh, another game. I let's go. I got on steam and wow, it is fucking donkey Kong country. Like I didn't realize yeah. how like literally every mechanic feels just like, I mean, maybe if the creators of donkey Kong country, you know, yeah, it's it is like, donkey it's that original Kong team. Country. Yeah. Yeah. I knew that it was like, in, you know, <coughs> this, sort of a thing but i just like it feels just like it yeah i mean there's a different world and tone and stuff like that but the gameplay is so similar um yeah i i loved that game i think um i like the original ukulele as well but i think that they really hit their stride with the 2d platformer uh in in that universe um I'm very interested in what Platonic is working on right now, actually. Like if they are continuing that franchise or if they're going to do like a blend of the two uh, or if they do something completely different, you know, both of the games were like different styles of platformer. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting. I did love impossible Lair, man. I kind of want to replay that now that you're talking. About oh man. It. Yeah. Impossible Lair came out in 2019 and they've been publishing a bunch of other games, but not mm-hmm. developing and releasing yep. them. So, interesting yeah yeah that's that's what i've been playing awesome 
Well, I love seeing you play more uh, more 2D platformers, Patrick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For me, uh, I, d- I haven't been playing a lot of games. I'm back on my Halo Infinite. I always play Infinite. My my crew has gotten more uh, more sweaty. So now we are taking clips and uh, reviewing clips to understand Ooh. how we move differently. Oh, game tape. Yeah. We're, nice. This, this is the level. This is what I wanted the whole time. I'm secretly <laughs> a, a, a sweaty FPS player. I've always. This is who I've always been. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of fun um, to break down. And we've been we've had arguments about <laughs> strategy. It that's been fun to work through. Yes. <laughs> that's Very awesome. Good. Yeah. David, how about you? What have you been playing? Uh, yeah, I've been playing kind of some random shit. Uh, the other night on a uh, stream, I uh, finally beat Neon White. I never actually finished the game. I, I was like, um, I was like two worlds away from completion or whatever. So I actually like finished the base game and rolled credits on that. Uh, there's a lot more to that game that I haven't played. You know, there's a lot of shit to unlock and all the levels, you know, like getting golds or platinums and all the levels like was not my priority and finishing the game right now. But then on top of that, there's also like a bunch of like side missions and stuff you can get through, like tell- uh, having memories with people or whatever. And a lot of that I still haven't done a ton of, um, but yeah, just finally finished the main story and it's a great game. Really, really enjoyed that so much. If you haven't played neon white yet, that game is just incredible. So unique and um, really excellent. Uh, also uh, speaking of uh, beating, I 100% of Lunistus uh, the other day, I got all the steam achievements and S ranked uh, all the stages with all the characters uh, and de- found all the hidden collectibles and shit. It was like, Damn, I really got my <laughs> mileage out of that five dollar game. I guess. It's like about twenty one hours all told, uh, is what Steam tells me. Uh, in game is about sixteen hours, is what the in game clock tells me. Um, but yeah, Lunastis also another great indie. Those were probably my two favorite indies from last year. Um, played a little bit more Melatonin uh, as well. That Rhythm Heaven like uh, that game is really excellent. I've been taking that in little bite sized bits. Matt, I saw you in my stream the other night. Yeah, uh, so I, I played a little I, bit I, of Melatonin. I, I don't know how much you saw. You. I listened to you. I had to minimize you because I want to play that game, but I don't want to know any of the mini games before I see them. <laughs> so I listened to oh, you. Yeah. I did not watch you, but you have a beautiful uh, voice. Well, thank you very much. Uh, and it's <laughs> listening is half of that game anyway. So uh, yeah. you got the gist of it. But uh, uh, that's really great. And then uh, new games uh, that I bought uh, the last couple of days. I've been, um, you know, I've got like a little bit of like eShop credit left over and like some gold points and stuff. So here and there, like during the big sale that's been happening recently, I uh, I picked up a couple of games. I picked up uh, Road to Balhalla is what it's called. It's like a top down ball rolling uh (laughs) kind of puzzle game um it's very kind of simple in its kind of concept and style um but it's just you know it's just a puzzle game it's like uh get the ball from point a to point b pick up as many of the uh pickups as you can on the way so it's kind of got a little bit of pac-man vibe um and then it's just got this like attitude to it as well like the the like text that comes up and tells you what to do is like super snarky uh and i like that about it i was like three bucks on sale i think it's probably still on sale if you check it out now um so road to, road to bahala is a very david game uh you know <laughs> I, I like my ball rolling games uh and then uh lastly other than the mainstays you know i've been doing some table surf battling and some uh splatooning but uh, other than that i picked up love three um, which, uh, if you're familiar with the love franchise, uh, it's super minimalistic, uh, 2d platformers, uh, that's really high on challenge, um, and kind of has a bit of a speed focus, but, uh, it does the thing where you could set your own, uh, uh, check marks, whatever you want. Is that what you call that? Checkpoints, uh, yeah. wherever you want. And, um, and love three is great. I mean, it's the third in it, in this series of games, but then love three also has, every single level from love one and love two and both remastered versions of all those stages and like even older stages of them. And it's like this big mashup. So it's like every little bit of content that's ever existed in the love franchise is in love three right now, uh, which is currently on sale as well. Um, and that one, that one I got just with gold points. That one's a great pickup. I think uh, we had, we had Barry Carenza on from premium edition games. He was talking about love three. They partnered with them. Uh, I just bought it digitally. Um, Fuck you, Barry. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I, uh, <laughs> but uh, holy but it, shit. It, yeah, yeah. So I don't mean Damn. that. I don't know. If that just went zero to yeah. ten yeah. so fast. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. I just he'd just be mad that I bought it digitally. But I, uh, <laughs> but no, it was. Uh, it's a really great game, and it reminds me. Of, 
you know, it reminds me a lot of your game, Monochrome Heights, Patrick, and just that it's like pretty minimalist in its like visual style, but like has a lot of like mechanics in it that are pretty robust that you just wouldn't know it when you first look at it. Um, and they're all really short experiences, but it's a game that you kind of meant to like play over and over again and get better mm. at each time. Um, but yeah, so I've, I've been really enjoying that. And um, yeah, there's a lot more I want to play. I'm kind of just like doing a lot here and there before I like sink either back into Chain Echoes for a while or like get into any of these new releases that are coming out. But um, I'm kind of dipping my toes in a lot of stuff as it were at the moment. But that's what I've been playing recently. Awesome. Well, uh, I think that does it for this week's episode then. Thanks uh, again to Stephanie who joined us earlier uh, for coming on. Thanks to MilkyWay.co who does our website. Thanks to Corduroy for doing our music. If you're looking for me, Patrick Online, I am PDYX most places. Hey, I'm Matthew on Twitter, M-A-T-H-Y-O-U. I'm pretty much ever on the internet at Monolith Fiji. And once again, make sure you check out a Boss Rush podcast and another Zelda podcast to see some of Stephanie's stuff. And if you'd like to find our show on social media, we are at Switchheads on Twitter, at Super Switchheads on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, we got a website, switchheads.com. And then we've uh, got our Discord, man. Join our Discord. It's such a great place uh, for everybody to hang out. It's been popping off recently, as usual. And uh, we're having a lot of fun on there, and we would love to have you join both the uh, Discord and our Facebook group. We'll have links to both of those in the description of this show. That's going to do it. What a great episode. I had a really good time talking about that. I knew we were like, when we were doing our speculations episode, we we're like, we could probably do a whole fucking episode on, <laughs> on Tears of the Kingdom. I'm glad we did. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. If there was anything that you were listening to there, or you have your own theories, please uh, be sure to leave those uh, uh, on our Discord. Or honestly, you know what would be best? Leave them in a comment on the YouTube version, man. Head over to our YouTube page. Leave some comments there. Let's get that algorithm to boost us up a little bit on the uh, YouTube. We'd really appreciate that. And we'd love any likes and subscribes you could throw away as well. Uh, but that's going to do it. Uh, we're going to be back next week. we got a big release. we got the first big release of the year with uh, Fire Emblem Engage coming out next week. So we're going to be talking all about that uh, for our next episode and whatever news happens along the way. But in the meantime, gang, you know the drill. Stay safe out there. Be kind to one another. Be kind to yourself. Uh, wash your hands and shit. Wear a mask if you're still <laughs> into that. I don't know. <laughs> you guys still wear masks? I don't know. We'll talk about that later. But uh, <laughs> other than that, we love you guys very much. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.